Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven again, everybody. Now, in this one, I'm beginning at the very far eastern end of this village. Now, behind me, you can see there's like a little hill, but that's not actually a hill. What the road's doing there is it's going up and over a bridge, and that bridge is crossing a particular kind of road. It's not a river, it's not a railway line, it's a road. But the road isn't in use anymore because it used to transport coaches to a big hall, which was demolished in the 1960s. The road's still there though, and we can check it out. Welcome to the parish of Blankney. The North Kesteven series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one-stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough, or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Blankney, Blankers Island. Hello again, North Kesteven. Here's the next instalment of your lovely district. This is Blankney, situated 10 miles south of Lincoln and 9 miles north of Sleaford. Blankney has existed since at least the time of William the Conqueror, when it belonged to the major landowner, Walter Daincourt. The name is Old English, and it's thought to mean Blankers Island. It's a small stone village built around the large estate of Blankney Hall. Blankney, its estate and its hall have been associated with a few names over the years. The village owes much of its current existence to the chaplains who built many of the properties. Although the hall no longer stands, there are huge clues to its once existence. The most notable of these would be its magnificent but sadly crumbling stable block. The former coach road which linked the hall to Metheringham railway station can still be seen on maps, but it's private now. As for the former parkland, well, that's still in use. It became Blankney Golf Club. The houses here are typical estate properties and they're in good nick. Virtually every house carries a Grade 2 listing and it would be easier to tell you which ones don't. To the east of it all is Blankney Fen, upon which are the remains of RAF Metheringham and the settlement of Blankney Dales. There's a lot here then. Let's get walking. We start at the eastern end of the village at a bridge carrying the road into Blankley Fen. The bridge crosses one of the most interesting thoroughfares ever created, an old coach road. The bridge itself is pretty impressive as a structure. Made of both yellow and red brick, it has a pair of high parapets and wouldn't look out of place somewhere on the UK's railway network. That's a somewhat ironic observation, given that the coach road was actually railway related. Built in the early 20th century, it connected Blankney Hall to Metheringham Railway Station. 
coach road still exists all the way up to the station, but the stretch between that and the bridge is private. It runs through a dense woodland, some of which was newly planted at the time of its construction. Its purpose was quite simple. It allowed visitors to Blankney Hall a safe and discreet passage from the station without being seen by the local populace. One visitor who frequented the hall quite a lot was Edward VII, who at the time was Prince of Wales. He used Blankney Hall as a discreet retreat for his amorous adventures. Although it looks very private, you can actually follow the coach road all the way to the site of Blankney Hall, but the building itself has long since been demolished. All that remains today are the dilapidated remains of a former stable block. These stables were designed for Blankney by E. J. Wilson in 1831. The grounds at Blankney were of great interest, not least for the graves of numerous horses, hounds and dogs. The last remnants of the hall were pulled down in the mid-1990s. Most of it had been destroyed decades earlier in a fire. Well, trust me, it's worth getting mud on your shoes if you want to see the stable block here. It's quite the impressive building. It's a bit of a shame it's all boarded up and not really used for anything now, isn't it? And that is all that remains now of Blankney Hall. The hall itself was demolished in the 1960s, and it's the subject of today's special section because I thought it was perhaps a, worthy of a bit more, shall we say. So here that comes right now. Blankney Hall was built in the 1790s and was one of the grandest houses in Lincolnshire during the 19th century. The hall and the estate have a long history. If we go back to the 15th century, the estate at that time was in the hands of the Lovells of Titchmarsh. After the Battle of Stokefield in 1487, all of their estates were confiscated by Henry VII for the crown, and the Blankney estate was bought by the Thorold family. It was they who did much to embellish the house with carved panelling of the period. So William Widrington was next to come along. He was created Baron Widrington of Blankney in 1643. Lord Widrington's great-grandson, William, took part in the Jacobite Rising of 1715. He was captured at Preston, convicted of high treason, and his lands were confiscated in the following year. In 1719, Thomas Chaplin, a prominent Lincolnshire landowner, purchased land from the Crown Commissioners for Confiscated Land, and it was to remain in his family for over two centuries. The estate owes its appearance largely to the influence of the Chaplins and their care of the land. The last Chaplin, Henry, led an extravagant lifestyle and had political ambitions. This lifestyle, coupled to the failing revenues from farms, led him ever into debt, until finally in 1892 the estate passed to the principal mortgagee, William Denison, the first Earl of Lonsborough. That's how the Lonsborough Arms in Metheringham gets its name. Crippling death duties again forced a sale to Billy Parker in 1938, a successful farmer from Norfolk. He was the most successful farmer in England at that time, farming 32,000 acres in Norfolk, Lincolnshire and Leicestershire. The Parker family still own the estate to this day. At the start of World War II, Blankney Hall was requisitioned by the military. It was used as billets for servicemen for nearby RAF stations. During 1945, it was badly damaged by fire and was then left as an empty shell before being mostly demolished in the 1960s. The last remaining fragments were removed in 1995. The path that runs past the stable block emerges onto Oswald's Lane, and that takes its name from the church. Dedicated to St Oswald, this church sits on the southern extremity of the village. There's been a religious building in Blankney for centuries. The first known church was mentioned in the Doomsday Book as being part of the manor of Walter Danecourt. The present church is largely a rebuild of an early 19th century building, which in itself was also a rebuild. This incarnation dates from between 1878 and 1881. St Oswald's is constructed of coarse limestone rubble. It has a notable tomb slab within it, that of John de Glory, which features a bearded head looking out of a cusped opening. There's also a sculpture of Lady Florence Chaplin, which is attributed to Joseph Bowen. The church is a listed building, and so too is its lick gate. 
This was erected in 1883 in memory of Florence Chaplin. The gates are pierced by keyhole-shaped decorations. Speaking of gates, this one on the churchyard's entrance commemorates the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Usually, Blankney Hall was not built within its parkland. Instead, the park was on the opposite side of the village's main road. Although part of it has been lost to arable farming, much of it remains in use as a golf course. Blankney Golf Course is one of the most popular parkland courses in the country. It was first laid out over nine holes in 1902 by the second Earl of Lonsborough. It's likely he did this for his own personal use so that he could challenge his guests. In 1904, Blankney Golf Club was formed to manage the course, which it continues to do today. In 1938, it was decided to extend the course to 18 holes, and this extended course came into play at the start of the 1940 season. Several buildings at the rear of Blankney's main street are used by the club. As well as the offices, there's also a clubhouse and a shop. The main car park is up here too. Virtually every property along Lincoln Road is a listed building. Blankney is a traditional stone-built estate village, and all the houses remain owned by the estate and occupied by its tenants. Most are two- or three-bedroomed cottages, but there are a few larger farmhouses and one-bedroom units too. From time to time, some properties are available to let on an AST agreement. At the end of the street is the old school and the old schoolhouse, both built in 1848 by W. A. Nicholson. It is rather interesting that these were included in a planned village, because children did not legally have to go to school until the 1870 Education Act. The old school is now available to hire throughout the year for social functions. On its wall is the parish notice board. Mark it off folks, that's Blankney in the books. On Drury Street is Blankney Cricket Club. This was originally formed in 1873 and continued to flourish into the 20th century under the patronage of Lord Lonsborough. He used to watch the matches from the north wing of Blankney Hall. However, at the end of World War II, the club went into decline and closed a few years later, leaving only the golf club as the village's sports venue. However, in 1988, Blankney Cricket Club was reformed on the very same site. The ground was developed and a new clubhouse was added, opening in 1991. Okay, so we've reached a triangle of land back at the eastern end of the village. You can see behind me on this triangle, there's a sign that says Blankney Walks. And you know what? It's actually quite amazing for an estate village, just how much of it is openly publicly accessible, how many walks there are, you know, the footpaths and bridleways and byways and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can walk around it and enjoy yourself. And if the weather was nicer, it would be even better, wouldn't it? But there you go, can't have it all, can you? Now, at this junction, you can see there's a road 
that goes off to the left, that goes to Metheringham, and to the right, that goes down towards Blankney Dales, which is similar to Sots, Sots Hole and Tanvats, which you saw uh, in the Metheringham episode, Metheringham episode last week. I'm not about to go down there because I think one bumpy road is enough for one day. Basically, you've seen Sots Hole, you've seen Tanvats, you've basically seen Blankney Dales. The, uh, the difference between them is that Blankney Dales borders the river with them, whereas those two kind of didn't. Anyway, we are still going part of the way out there because there's one thing I haven't covered yet so far, a big thing that falls within Blankney's boundaries, and that would be the former RAF Metheringham. Let's go and find the airbase. To get to the airfield, this road is the most direct route. However, if you try to go to it by car, it won't work. In front of us here is the Peterborough to Lincoln railway line, which Metheringham station is on. As you can see, there's a hand-operated level crossing, but there's also a problem. Well, this wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> I knew there was a level crossing here, but I didn't know it was this kind of level crossing. This is the, the sort where you have to phone uh, to, to get across the road, uh, to get across the railway line, I should say. Uh, you can see there from the sign, you must always phone the signaler signal before crossing to ensure it's safe to cross. However, even if I do do that here, I still won't be able to get across because these are locked, um, which is weird. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Luckily for us, there is another way we can get to the old uh, airbase to be fair so uh, I'll just have to go back and go that way instead but yeah that's something I didn't expect to see out here a little bit of bonus footage for you I suppose Once on Blankney Fen, you can't miss RAF Metheringham. The concrete at the road's edge is a clear indication that this is either a former runway or the perimeter track. RAF Metheringham operated as a bomber airfield during World War II. The station opened in October 1943 and was decommissioned in the spring of 1946. Although now mostly returned to agricultural and commercial uses, the site retains one original runway and its eastern perimeter track. When built, it covered approximately 600 acres. It was a Class A airfield with a standard layout. The main runway was 2,000 yards long, and the other two both measured 1,400 yards. Metheringham had two standard T2 hangars, one alongside the B1189 near Linwood Grange, and the second just off the eastern perimeter track near Bath Farm. RAF squadrons number 106 and 110 were stationed here, although 110 were only here for a few weeks before moving to Waddington. Despite only having a single week to settle in, 106 Squadron was operational in time for the Battle of Berlin. When hostilities ceased in 1945, 106 Squadron had lost 65 Lancaster bombers and 995 aircrew. And part way down that second road you come to this memorial, which uh, obviously is for RAF Metheringham. There's a, uh, a plaque here which says RAF Metheringham. There you go, this is for number 106 Squadron Royal Air Force, and the dates are right there. Lots of people come to visit this. There's a plaque here as well on this side of the memorial. Let's read what this says. Metheringham, dedicated to the airmen and airwomen of the British Isles and Dominions, Europe and America, who served on and with 106 Squadron in World War II, 1939 to 1945. 995 gave their lives, lest we forget. And you can see as well, it's not just Metheringham. Syaston on the left-hand side, Finningley on the right-hand side, we've seen both of those. And on the bottom, Coningsby, which we haven't yet got to, but we will do eventually. Brilliant. Absolutely magnificent. Now, as far as memorials go, this isn't the only thing that memorialises RAF Metheringham. You see, there is a visitor's centre as well, which you can go to to learn about the history of the airfield. But that's not within Metheringham Parish, and it's not within Blankney Parish either. It's actually in the next one, which is coming your way next week. And I'm heading there right now. And folks, that's it for Blankney, but next week we'll be seeing what happened to the rest of RAF Metheringham. Come with me then as we take a look at a village which has more RAF history, but has, for many years, also been vital for another reason. Transportation. I'll see you on the banks of the Witham in seven days' time.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.